Welcome to another episode of Tiffin Box TV. I speak with photography industry leaders who make it a habit of inspiring others, bridging craft and commerce to help you create a sustainable and creative business. Today's guest is John Gress, who's a photographer, a portrait photographer based in Chicago, Illinois. He's braving the polar vortex today to join us from his studio. Welcome to the show, John. Hey, good morning. How's it going? Excellent, it's excellent. Sorry, it's only 23 below zero, but I think we'll make it through. Oh my goodness. And you've been so kind to shut your heater off so that the microphone doesn't catch the noise on the background. So thank you so much for doing that. We'll make this nice and quick. Uh, John, for, for my audience, um, I would love to know how you got started. I know it's a question that most photographers get asked and it's sort of uh, a bit of a tired question to ask a photographer because almost everybody goes back to like, oh, my, my dad bought me a brownie or whatever. But I would love to be able to ask you like, what is it that inspired you to become a photographer and a full-time photographer at that? It is pretty close. I thought my story was going to be somewhat unique. But, <laughs> okay. Uh, I went to summer camp, I think, when I was 14, and I borrowed my mom's camera. Okay. And I just thought it was great that it gave me a reason to go and talk to people and be social. And so I really loved that interaction. Yeah. And I just kept doing it uh, throughout uh, you know, that year. And then when I got into high school, I started taking classes. And about the same time... My friend was really, uh, my friend got me into going to try to get autographs from NBA players when we were younger. And I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll take pictures of them coming and going and then I'll get them to sign them or something. And it's kind of funny that then 20 years later, I was shooting photos of NBA players for their rookie cards. And I sort of started out in photography by uh, collecting rookie cards of NBA players. Well. That didn't quite make sense, but I think you know right, what I meant. That's awesome. So I'm assuming you got Michael Jordan's in your collection, right? Well, so I grew up in Portland, so oh, okay. I think I might have seen Michael Jordan once or twice, but that's about it. Got yeah. it. So, of course, we'd love to know a little bit more about how you got started in that whole business of photographing NBA stars, and I know you have done a whole uh, selection of a uh, series of uh, NFL uh, fo players yeah. as well. Uh, in your portfolio, they all jump out because uh, they're beautifully lit. I think that's what really captivates, uh, captivated my uh, attention to your work right away. I was like, wow, these just pop, you know? Um, so tell us a little bit about how you uh, move from photographing or going to these NBA games and getting signatures and autographs to uh, actually working with the with these NBA stars. Yeah, so... After I uh, got out of the autograph phase, phase I was shooting uh, high school sports and then professional sports for newspapers awesome. and uh, wire services. Um, and then, uh, and I kept doing that for about 10 years. And then my friend said that he wanted, and, and during that time I was also shooting portraits of executives and that sort of things and other people that were in the news. And my friend said that he wanted me to teach him lighting because he wanted to be a fashion photographer. And uh, I, the first time we went out, I was the model. And then eventually we started working with people who wanted to actually be models. And I thought it was a lot of fun. And then he said to me, you know, I don't really need to know all this technical stuff. That's like stuff that you need to know. And I just want to feel the pictures. And then later on, he said something like, I want to go to Paris and find myself. And uh, that was sort of the end of our uh, photo relationship. And, uh, but I just found that I really liked shooting models. So I kept doing it for the next, uh, well, I guess that's been the last 12 or so years. And I just kept getting better and better and better. And some of the contacts that I made when I was shooting actual sports events, they ended up working at the trading card company and then they ended up hiring me. And partly because of all that practice that I did, I was ready to go when the phone came, when the phone call came. So. It's sort of a thing I would really encourage people is just to get out there and practice and get better all the time so that they are ready when the opportunity comes. Fantastic. That's great advice, honestly. Um, one of the things we uh, one of the things I spoke of when was introducing you is that you are a teacher. You've just uh, wrapped up a uh, presentation at Imaging USA, right? Um, how was that? How was that event for you personally? You know, it was really fun to meet over 100 people who were really uh, jazzed and really interested in photography and learning. And I had such a good time just showing them 
some tips and tricks that I learned along the way. And it's also really great to see this sense of community where there are 10,000 people coming together and uh, just sort of forming that community. A lot of the times we think that we sort of live in our own bubble because most of us are independent business people. And if we're lucky, we might see people in the morning when we go to drop the kids off, maybe in your case, or mm -hmm. uh, um, maybe you know at the end of the day when our spouses come home and we sort of don't have a lot of social interaction. So it was so great to see all these people coming together and sharing and learning from each other. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm assuming you're going to go back again next year, wherever it's going to be. Right? If they invite me, I'll definitely be there. Awesome. That's awesome. Uh, John, one of the things uh, I've also been paying attention to is, of course, the fact that you are now offering workshops in a bunch of cities in the U.S. Uh, and thankfully, you're coming to Boston. Uh, I will be seeing you in early February for sure. But you have a slew of other cities that are that you're having workshops at. What is the what was the whole idea behind taking your 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 knowledge, I guess, and sharing it with other photographers on the road? Why why wouldn't you just have people fly into Chicago where you're based? Well, for the longest time, I thought about being an adjunct professor, like at a community college, but I didn't really want to because uh, I enjoy teaching people. I just didn't really want to be uh, disappointed, and a lot of the time, just dealing with working with people who were doing it as a hobby, who weren't really interested in it as a profession. Just like when I was at Imaging, it was so great to have people that were like completely into it. They weren't just there for right. an easy A, they were really there to learn. And Got so it. that's why I'm really happy that I'm gonna be going to all these different cities because I'll be meeting all kinds of people and sort of hopefully, you know, helping them along in their journey. I, for the longest time, wish that I could uh, uh, have an actual like portrait photography lighting lighting mentor who would teach me things, and and it never came to be. So a lot of what I learned was through experimentation and YouTube, and you can learn that way. It just takes really a long time. Sure. Yeah. So I'm hoping that by doing these workshops, I'll be able to help people uh, get a lot further ahead, a lot faster uh, than it took me to get here today. Awesome. Now, you've already had a couple of workshops on the West Coast, I believe, um, or close to the West Coast. Tell us a little bit about how you're structuring these workshops. What can one somebody, uh, what can one, uh, you know, learn or attempt to learn when, when he or she comes to your workshop? Yeah, so I start off by showing uh, a handful of different modifiers, between five or seven. And I, I show them and we take pictures with each one um, from hardest to softest source. And I do that so that people can sort of get an idea of what the characteristic of light is from each modifier. Because when I started to, to learn, I was looking at pictures and deconstructing them and then saying, oh, well, let me, that's probably this kind of light. Let me recreate it using that sort of light. And that's still what I do today. So that's why I wanted to start with that as a foundation so everybody can sort of understand what each modifier does. And then next, I take the cheapest one which is uh, an $84 umbrella, and show people how they can modify that with uh, pieces of foam core from Office Depot or Office Max, depending on where you live, and make it look like it was taken with three lights instead of just one. And then after lunch, we'll jump into recreating five to seven of my most popular images uh, from Instagram by uh, working with a professional model. And the way we'll do that is I'll show a diagram and a behind the scenes photo and an after photo and ask the students to move the lights around to the correct location. And then I'll go into each light and uh, set it up exactly where it should be and explain to people why I'm doing that and what I'm thinking about and what the power settings I think should be and the theory behind that and actually doing it. So, and then after everything is dialed in, I'll get out of the way and all the uh, attendees can, can take turns working with the model. And that way people are leaving not only with the knowledge of how to recreate those photos, but they're leaving with images for their portfolio too. And I know sometimes working with a lot of lights can be intimidating to, to people. Um, I've, I've heard that from a lot of people who are working professionals that maybe their comfortability level is is one or two lights most of the time and they don't they're kind of worried about uh 
using four or five lights. So the way that I structure it is so that we start off with a a smaller, so to speak, <laughs> setup where it's only uh, a couple of lights and then work up to a five or six light setup. That way everybody sort of uh, comes along gradually to, to doing those complicated things. Awesome, awesome, that's great. So John, tell me a little bit about why you limit the number of folks who come to your workshops to just 15. You know, I just wanna make sure that everybody has an opportunity to ask all the questions that they wanna ask. I really like to create a safe space for everybody to ask any question at whatever level they're at. I'm happy to help and 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 answer those concerns. And they could range from what type of light should I get to why exactly is this light pointed here and you know what's the exposure value. So I just want to make sure that everybody has a chance to to learn, and that's why I want to keep it down to a, a small number of people. Awesome.